As some of you guys may know, I'm back home for the summer. I definitely feel fortunate to have grown up in such a beautiful location. And I actually had the unique opportunity to interview somebody who has spent the majority of his life out here. So before the video begins, I just want to run a quick clip uh, just talking to one of my good buddies about how growing up on the Key Peninsula has shaped his life and some of the great things that have come from it. Hope you guys enjoy. Yeah, so I told Susan, I said, listen, you better back off because he ain't baptized yet. And if you want to run around with, Ricky, what's that? We're ready for you. Oh yeah, sure thing. Okay, let's go. I'm ready. All right, let's just start with your name. Yeah, name's Ricky fucking Pilsner. Don't get it twisted now. Yeah, listen now. Y'all might be hearing some gunshots from time to time, but don't fret. That's why I keep the motherfucking thing on me, you know what I'm saying? All right, Ricky, let's put that away before somebody gets... Yeah, I've been growing up here since I'm about one years old. Zero to one, I was in a shipping container in North Taiwan. Parents sold me in a drug auction. Fucking tweakers. I made my way back, though. You know, once you catch a whiff of the meth, it's kind of like a dog whistle. They can just start cooking again. The fumes travel over a couple continents. I must have caught a hint of the scent. Parents wake up day after my first birthday. I'm in the driveway in my stroller lighting up a dart. <laughs> Times are crazy, man. We heard you might have spent some time on the set of True Detective. Is that right? Sure did. It was a damn good time, too. Let me tell you, Woody Harrelson's a hell of a good cook. They only wanted to smoke dope, though. I said, hey, I love drugs, but let's get it going. We can get some black tar, some crystal rolling through here, no problem. Summon some real demons, you know what I'm saying? God, it does feel good being back out in the toolies, though. Spend too much time in the city, you start getting a little bit of claustrophobicness going on in your upper extremities. It's not good for the brain waves. Being back out in the trees kind of opens your mind and soul a bit. Reminds me of a DMT trip I did back in 94. Oh, God put me through the universe's vortex and spat me out through his asshole. That shit was fucking crazy. <laughs> Is that fucking Marty? Hey, you still owe me two dollars, you son of a bitch! Oh, Ricky, what a character. Anyway, guys, today I'm shooting a film stock that I've never shot before, Fuji Venus 800. And the first few frames were actually taken on my great-grandfather's Tamron 85-210 to lens that he had for his Canon AE-1 when he shot film back in the day. So I headed out to a small town called Manchester, which has a beautiful view of the Seattle skyline. Thought I'd try out a telephoto lens on my Canon AE-1. So ideally, I'd be shooting these on a monopod, but I'm currently using my monopod as a clothes hanger in my closet. So we're just gonna hand hold these. It's gonna be a uh, one one thousand at F16. No, you're good. You're, you're good. No, you're good. Uh, breaking news, this lens has a macro mode that I just found out. You press this little button here and it takes you over to these macro focal lengths. You just look through the, the viewfinder. This is like some legit macro activity we got going on over here. I think I'm gonna have to take a couple, couple test photos. Well, after seeing the results from this lens, I can safely say that I'm never going to use it again. It's just not that sharp. And the macro mode has a weird distortion around the edges. It like warps the image in a really weird way. Overall, I just prefer using my 35 to 70 zoom. All right, the sun's poking out now. So I think it'll be a good opportunity to see how the colors of Venus 800 really look. Uh, we're gonna head off to a new spot and take some more photos. Alright, I popped over to a new location. We're in downtown Gig Harbor now, which is near where I went to high school. Beautiful little town, uh, lots of little shops and restaurants and stuff. Uh, it's pretty empty right now given the whole situation, so we're just gonna pop around to some different spots and see if we can take some cool images. So on the AE-1 now, I'm using the 35-70, to which is the only lens that I brought with me when I traveled to Europe for two months with this camera. It's super nice, and the images are, they're so comparable to both the 35mm and the 50mm primes. 
Um, it's a pretty sharp lens and just having the versatility of 35 all the way to 70 with you at all times in a lightweight package really makes this camera worth it. I'd rather sacrifice a little bit of quality for a much more uh, mobile and easy to work with lens. It's really interesting making a video shooting on 35 millimeter because usually when I shoot 35 millimeter it's fast pace. I just see something and I quickly take the photo as opposed to medium format. It's more of a methodical process where you, you know, I, a lot of the times I have it set up on the tripod and I'll take my time framing up each shot. So I kind of wish I had just had a GoPro or something to wear because that would make it a lot, a lot quicker for filming and taking the shots that I want to take. right around here and I really haven't taken <laughs> taken much photos in this location which is like the iconic spot in Gig Harbor, downtown Gig Harbor with the marina. A lot of beautiful compositions around here and I didn't even notice it until I started shooting on film. Gotta love it. I love the, the soap and the Clorox wipes right there by the window. That is the perfect story for our current global situation. going on but I think it should still work. Alright a few different elements I like going on right here. I like the green bushes in front, foreground. I like these, I don't even know what they are but they're these weird uh, long pine cone looking branch things that are coming down and hanging in front of all these kayaks. This is probably my favorite photo from the roll. I'm always attracted to simple scenes and knowing that this cafe would usually be packed to the brim under normal circumstances during that time, I definitely felt the need to capture that moment. Fuji Venus 800, I really like the way that it rendered the colors in this scene. It definitely adds to that timeless look. Really happy with this photo. Who doesn't love a good old back alleyway on film shot, am I right? Alright guys, I'm going to leave you with some final thoughts on Fuji Venus 800. It's about what I expected it to be. I'm going to shoot Portrait 800 instead 9 out of 10 times, but it's always fun to experiment with different film stocks. It definitely has that classic Fuji green cast over a lot of the images, and I noticed that the color rendition from scene to scene was a bit unpredictable. I would recommend this film stock to any beginner because I did notice that it has a good amount of latitude. I underexposed a few of those images on accident and they came out completely fine. And it also has that classic vintage nostalgic film look to it. So if that's the aesthetic that you're going for, this could be a great film stock for you. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up this video. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. That's going to be the best way to help support me as a photographer right now, and I would very much appreciate it. Hope you guys are staying safe and healthy out there. Wish you guys all the best. Take it easy. I'll catch you guys next week. Peace.